Option trading has so many confusing graphs and numbers, isn't it? Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills to help solve this very, very interesting problem to explain option trading in the simplest, humanly understandable way possible. And in this video, I'm going to cover Call Debit Spreads, a more advanced play in option trading. I will have three versions for you. Call Debit Spread in one minute, three minutes, and five minutes all with real Robinhood demos, easing you from high-level principles to needy-greedy details. And as you know my style, you don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's dive right into it. Good morning everyone, my name is Justin. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. I'm here today to use design to explain call debit spreads. Option trading, it is like a video game. You do follow a skill tree. You do need to understand buying calls and selling call options before knowing call debit spreads. Otherwise, this video won't make too much sense for you, so I will link those videos up in the corner and description down below. If you understand those already, here's a one minute version of call debit spreads. A call debit spread is buying a call and selling another call at a higher strike price. It's called a spread because this position spreads across two strike prices. Imagine you're spreading a pad of butter, same thing here. You spread from one strike price to another. If you open this 715, 720 called debit spread, you are expecting Tesla stock is gonna go above 720, the highest strike price here. If you spread from here to here, you will have a 700, 705 call debit spread, with which you will think Tesla stock is going to go above 705. It's called a debit spread because once you open this position, your account will be debited some amount. You pay some money out of your own pocket. For example, if you buy a 715 call and then sell a 720 call to open this 715, 720 call debit spread, you will need to spend $228 for it. It costs you $228 to open this position. And that's the one minute version. Pretty straightforward, right? Now let's go into the three minute version. A call debit spread involves two call option contracts. You buy one and then you sell another one. The one that you buy will have a lower strike price than the one that you sell. This is always true if it's flipped it will become a call credit spread, which I made a video for if you're interested, link up in the corner and description down below. Robinhood will tell you what spread that you open, so it's always good to double check it up here to see if you're actually opening a call debit spread position. So, okay, I spent 220 for it, and then what, what happens now? The concept is actually very similar to buying stock or just buying a call option contract. You pay first, you spend money first. And then once you close the position, you will get some money back, which could be more than you pay for if you win or less if you lose. It turns out to be a debit because it costs you more money to buy a lower strike call than the money that you receive from selling a higher strike call. In this 715, 720 call debit spread example, you spend $220 upfront because buying a 715 Tesla call costs you $3,588 cash and selling a 720 call only gives you $3,360 so the net is a negative $228. Fundamentally, for any call option contract, a lower strike call is always always more expensive than a higher strike call. You can look at it right here. A 680 call is more expensive than a 690 call which is more expensive than a 700 call so on and so forth. Therefore, it makes total sense that what you spent on the low strike call is more than what you receive, what you gain from selling a higher strike call. As a result, your net negative is a debit, it costs you money. Is there a collateral or anything? Collateral only applies if you receive credits first, but since this is a debit spread, there's no collateral required from you. All you need is $228 to open this 715, 720 debit spread position. It's fairly straightforward. By expiration date, if Tesla stock is above 720, just like how you imagine, just like how you hope, let's say it ends at 750, you win. The 715 and 720 call option contracts will be fully, fully in the money. So their price will become 3.5K and 3K. You can close the position or leave them in your account and let your broker close it for you. No recommended, but it's an option. In either way, you will get $500 back, which gives you a profit of $272. If Tesla's share price ends up, let's say 700, below your lower call strike price of 715, both call option contracts that you have become worthless, zero. 
meaning you lose all 228 and that's the end of your spread. Now let's take a look at call debit spread in 5 minutes. In a call debit spread, you buy a low strike call option contract and at the same time, sell a high strike call option contract. Let's break it down one by one. If you just buy a 715 call, max cost 35.88. You want to test the stock to go above 715. That's how you make money from just buying a call. However, if you also sell a 720 call along with it, your risk profile becomes quite different. Selling a 620 call, you want Tesla stock to go down. You don't want it to go anywhere close to 720. If you juxtapose these two contracts together, you will see something different. For buying a 615 call, you want Tesla stock to go above 715. On the other hand, for selling a 720 call, you actually want Tesla stock to go below 720. You don't want it to go up. The net effect is that if Tesla stock does go up, your max profit is limited, is capped, but you can still capture the upside without spending crazy amount of money on it. It only costs you 228 and you can get 500 back, profiting 272 in two weeks. The max money you can get back from a 715, 725 call debit spread is 1000. And that for a 715, 735 call debit spread is 2000. See the pattern? It's always a difference between two strike prices times 100. The outcome of any call debit spreads has five scenarios. Using the same example, if Tesla stock ends above 720, you win. You close the position, you get 500 back, minus the cost, you profit 272. If Tesla stock ends below 715, you lose. You lose all 228. If Tesla stock ends at 717.28, you break even. You close the position, you get 228 back, so net zero. If Tesla stock ends between 720 and 717.28, you profit a little bit, say it ends at 718. The 715 call price will become 300. The 720 call price will be zero. So when you close the spread, you get 300 back minus the 228 you spent, that means you profit 72 bucks. If Tesla stock ends between 717.28 and 715, you lose a little bit. This is a chart that are designed to capture the scenarios. You cannot find this chart anywhere else. Robinhood has its own interactive chart. I think it's a bit too mathematical, not the best, but at least you have something to work with. So why would you want to open this 715, 720 call debit spread versus just buy a 715 call? Again, this is an advanced option play, so the answer is always leverage meaning you can use small amount of money to win big. Same example, you spend 228 to make 272. That's a 119% gain in two weeks. SPY or index funds only give you about 10% over a long period of time. However, if I were to just buy a 715 call, it costs me 35.88. If Tesla ends at 760, I can close the position, I can get 4.5K back, profiting $912. Using 35ADA to make 912, it's only a 25% gain. It's still pretty good for a two week play, but compared to 119% gain, it's a big difference, isn't it? If you have only 300 bucks in your account or a small account, there's no way you can just buy a 715 call, but you can certainly do a call debit spread. Hmm, all right, I see the appeal right now. What's the catch? Well, let's do a comparison. Spending 3588 on just a 715 call. If Tesla ends at 720, you lose all 3588, 100% lost. Spending 228 on a 715, 720 call debit spread. If Tesla ends at 720, you lose all 228, also 100% loss. Uh oh. But here's the difference. If you only have 3588 in your account, by buying just the 715 call, the best scenario is you will make more dollar amount. The worst case is your account will be wiped to zero. Zero. But if you only spend 228 out of that 3588 in your account on this 715, 720 call debit spread, the upside is you can make a high percentage of return. And the downside will be losing 228. Even then, you will still have $3,360 in your account. Your account will not be wiped to zero. Hmm, alright, alright. Then when is good to use this strategy? There are only two scenarios. 
One, I'm very, very, very confident that the underlying stock is gonna soar, it's gonna go above the highest strike price of that spread. And two, I have a small account and I want to win big. And I don't mind losing all that money in case things go south. All right, guys, that's how I see a call debit spread in three different ways. Is the breakdown useful? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. Buying costs, selling costs are still two very, very fundamental things you need to understand in option trading. Do you ever wonder if there's a better and visual way to understand those to get a sense of how they work behind the scenes? Actually, I've used my best design thinking and craftsman skills to capture those concepts in these videos. Check them out right there. Smash like button, subscribe to support this channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Choose.